So I was asked by a few of you to review this book. Um, this is Margaret Lee's uh, latest book, uh, The Art of Bead Embroidery, Japanese Style. Japanese style meaning that um, it's beading, but the type of embroidery that's done in this book are um, using Jap traditional Japanese embroidery um, techniques, very similar to um, the ones that they teach at the Kurenakai and um, in the JEC Center in Atlanta. Um, previously, there was this book um, in Japanese only that you could buy from the JC, and it, in it is are all the f the pieces from the phases that they teach. But um, all the instructions are in Japanese, obviously, and uh, it does come with English translations. But as we know, it's not the same. Um, there are other types of beading in Japan. I mean, this is another uh, bead embroidery book that I have by um, a Japanese author named Yukiki Ogura, but it's not the same style that's taught in this book. So um, let's take a look inside. By the way, this book was published by Inspirations, who, who does a really nice job. Um, so here's the table of content. There's um, a a really good list of projects in this book, as well as case studies. And there's the typical, uh, you know, materials list and uh, common practices and design concepts and stuff like that. So I'm just going to show you the inside. It's just an introduction, acknowledgements. Uh, there's a, a page on uh, bead embroidery uh, history in Japan. Um, and then it starts off with uh, beads. A description of what types of beads are available, um, the consistency size, the consistency in size, the shapes, and there's a list of all the finishes that are available on the market. I'm sure there's more, but this is as of. Oh, there's no date on this. Would have been nice if there were pictures of these, but um, there's just so many. Um, you can you can um, there are bead sampler cards they can buy that will show you uh, what each one looks like. There are very pretty pictures in this book. So then there's like a section on um, equipment, tools, and materials. And I really like this. There's a, um, a section on how to properly frame um, your fabric using traditional Japanese frames. Um, the JEC book also describes this, but it's all in Japanese. And the instructions are not translated for that section. Um, so just a comparison. It's very similar. Uh, yeah. Then there's the description of threads. Um, unlike other embroidery, you just need sewing thread, which is great. You don't have to spend a lot of money. And then the uh, section on ne the appropriate needles and uh, scissors and stuff like that. There's a, the sewing case is uh, really nice. It's the same one that's um, in the last issue of Inspirations. And uh, it's really cute. Comas are used. See, these are commas. Um, there's an all. And more, more equipments that you can use as well. Here's Margaret Lee. There's a, a section on common practices, uh, like how to start and end uh, threads, um, carrying threads, and uh, different things. The section on finishing process, I didn't really get this section, I'm going to have to read it again. But I think it's just uh, once you're done with a piece, uh, the different things you have to do, uh, check your back, uh, how to clean it, etc. And then there's the, uh, the section is about the actual technique, um, how to beat embroider using the Japanese style. I'm just going to go through these quickly. Um, this is a really good because my again my the original book I have is all in Japanese and although I have translations it's nice to have an actual English version of it. And see how to use the comas. These are for uh, couching a line of threads, uh, a line of beads. And satin stitch with uh, with beads. This is really cool. And there's uh, a way to do it with padding as well. See this padding. The filling stitches and then there's the projects so I think the first uh, three projects in this book are there for you to dip your toe in I guess um, so you to to get used to the technique 
And then as you get progressive, uh, get through all the different projects, it, they get more complex and there's less descriptions because it's assumed that um, you've under, you've learned the technique. It's very similar to the way they teach at the JC. At the JC, you go through five phases. Um, I don't know how I can't remember how many phases, how many projects are in this book, but uh, each project is supposed to teach you something new. Um, and before you even start, there's like a it's like a what to do when you run into an issue. There's like a troubleshooting FAQ at the beginning, which is nice. A lot of these you you learn as you go along, but it's nice to have them answered at the beginning before you start. It's pretty. This is uh, Japanese embroidery with some beading. This is the first project. You can actually get this kit um, from Inspirations. They've already released it in preparation for the book. It's very similar to the phase one that I'm using. I'm doing right now that I started in April. Um, this is a mirror case. I really like this. You can get these mirrors online. Um, they're they're usually empty on the top, so you can insert your own piece. And uh, for every project, there's the see here. There's a section on learning points. This is what you're learning in the in this project. Um, your list of materials as well, and the supplies that you need. Um, this book gives you the the beads in. They only use Toho in this book, right? But there's like other options like Miyuki, and um, I don't know what the other brands are. I only know Toho and Miyuki. I've used both. Uh, Miyuki is easier to find um, in in stores here and in North and like in shops in general. Tohos are harder, especially. Um, the tricut that they they like to use um, in this type of embroidery. The only tricut I've ever found is check, and it's not even the same size. Um, usually, checks check tricut are twelve, um, a size twelve. But in these in this book, it uses size eleven and size fifteen. So I'm gonna have to um, look a lot on the internet to find the materials I need. This is really pretty. It's the same um, it's the same design over and over, uh, but it's. It's beautiful how it comes out. And a Christmas project. This is really cute. The, the, the flowers really pop out and the leaves too. Is my favorite. Um, at the GEC phase two, there's another project that's very similar to this, uh, but it's stitched only in black. So the point of this is to stitch using one color of bead, but in different types of beads. So you'll have uh, some seed beads, some tricots, some bugles, some hexagons, and the pattern comes out uh, like it pops because of the how the light reflects off each type of bead. So these are seeds, I guess. These are seeds, and um, I think these look like bugle, and then the hexagons are here. So yeah, like I said, the JC Phase 2 is very similar to this, but it's black. I like the purple. See, this is a very similar project. It's just instead of using a single color, they're used um, a different uh, golds and blacks. This is another project, Hanami. She also has um, a wedding pillow for like uh, to, for the rings. Um, this is uh, there's some embroidery in it, but it's mainly beadwork. See, this is padded flowers. And you can do it in silvers or in gold. It's nice that you can just change it to whatever you want. They really like paisley designs. I'm not a fan, but it's it's the technique, I guess. See here how there's like a little shadow here, as if it's been raised.
And this is uh, what I'm really happy about. It's the best section ever, the case study section. She'll walk you through um, the purchase of the fabric and then how she um, designed her her bead embroidery. In Japanese style bead embroidery, a lot of times they'll buy printed fabric that is perfect for beading and then they'll just design, they'll find the right beads and um, they'll figure out what where to have... Uh, a raised stitch effect, for example, or um, a couched line, and uh, this this section. There's two. There's two case studies. This section will walk you through the process, and she'll even include a template for you to use in the future if you wanted to design your own pieces. But um, I think this section is gold out of all out of the entire book because she really walks you through everything uh, from the color choice to the technique to use. Um, and this is, I love this one. It's called Arabian Nights. The fabric is to die for once it's beaded. Here, it's beaded section. It's really amazing to see the, the difference between the pre-bead and the after-bead. And again, she'll go, sorry. Fix the camera. Yeah, and then she'll go through the the section. What she what's the plan for the project and what she wants to come from it. Uh, the central heart is really gorgeous. The last section is about general construction. Something I've noticed um, is that they use glue in their finishing process. I'm not crazy about using glue. Um, I had to use it for Hannah. Well, I had to. I did it for Hannah, and if I had to do it again, I probably would not use glue. But then again, this is a really old, te um, really old technique. So they've been using glue for a very long time, and nothing's happened to it, the pieces that they've stitched. So I'm assuming it's safe, but I don't know if I'd want to do it again. And at the end, uh, very much like the Inspirations magazine, you have the uh, pattern uh, sheet. Uh, for all the projects in the book, except the case studies, because um, those are those were done on fabric, so you don't have those. So that's the that's the book, uh, the art of bead embroidery, Japanese style. Um, I bought this book specifically to um, learn how to um, design my own pieces. So the case studies really help for that. I'm gonna have to study them more closely. The only thing I wish is that she spoke more about um, the finishing of beads. There's so many different reds, for example, of beads um, from like, you know, the iridescence to the metallic to the silver lined. Um, it's it's very easy to get lost. I mean, look at this list. It's very easy to get lost um, and to figure out what you want. And um, the, the Japanese way of teaching is that you do the phases and then you pick up a sort of intuition on um, how to select your colors and um, yeah, and I guess the beads as well. So I guess it takes practice. I don't know. We'll see. So um, and it, the other good thing is that it's a good uh, companion to this book. Um, I'm going through the phases. I'm still doing phase one, but eventually I hope I will be able to do all the rest of the four phases. And um, although this book is really good, Again, it's in Japanese. It comes with the translations, but um, I don't know. It, pictures are better. They really are. And, um, and not to mention the fact that um, the projects are not even translated, by the way, in this, because you're supposed to go to the JEC for that. Anyhow. So um, in order to help me with color, I decided to also get this book, which I am still reading. I'm at page... 51. It's a really good book so far. And um, yep, let me know what you guys think of the video. It's the first time I do one. I might have been a little scatterbrained, but uh, I'll try better at the future. So that's it for me, and uh, bye!